Okay, let's pray real quick. Our dear loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us um, a life and a heart of prayer and a mind to look to you when things go terribly wrong or even well. Help us to connect with you continually. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right. I can't see the clock. It means I can go as long as I, I want to, right? <clears throat> All right, today our talk is on prayer changes things. Okay? How many of you out there believe that prayer changes things? Everybody, wow, okay, excellent. Well, this has been my family motto for a long time. Um, we actually had a uh, thing on our wall that said prayer changes things. And through prayer and action, I was saved as a little child from things like the croup, from a temperature of 104, where my mom actually threw me in the bathtub full of ice. Uh, a tack swallowing incident. I was putting up a picture and swallowed it. My mom had to hold me upside down over the toilet and prayed over me. <laughs> She's a nurse. <laughs> and an acrobatic accident uh, where I landed on my back and stared death in the face. Both of my parents' prayers to the Lord helped to successfully bring demons out of people at a, at a church, and that person was actually later baptized. This is my inheritance and my legacy that my parents have given me. Today, I love talking to Jesus because I know he's listening. Today, I'm gonna talk about a few times in my life when trusting Jesus had a big impact on my life. And the first is the moment when I first surrendered to him. Now, I was raised Seventh-day Adventist, but uh, there was a time when I had some of my doubts. Hebrews chapter 11, verse six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. At age nine, during worship, I woke up, spiritually, I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> now, I asked the question, who was God? I don't know, how many of you have ever asked that question of yourselves at one time or another? Anybody ever asked, who is God? Is he really there? Is he really listening to me? I can't sense him, I can't see him, I can't taste, touch, or feel him. But at that time, age nine, I asked that question. Now, I'd never seen him, but I pondered this until it was my turn to pray. Now, we were going around in the circle, and there I was. I had to think, oh, no, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna pray? What should I do? Should I pray or should I not pray? I kinda need to know who God is. And right then, I had what some people refer to as a shoulder angel, like a little shoulder devil. I don't know which one was which. <laughs> but that first voice that popped into my head said, Oh, Handel, just pray. You know, if you don't pray, your whole family, they're watching you, right? They're gonna be like, why isn't he praying? Oh, maybe he has a demon or something. So they're gonna come over, surround you, and they're gonna put their hands on you and be like, oh, dear Lord, please, you know. <laughs> oh, you know, Handel can't pray. And I thought, oh, no, I, can't, I, I don't want that to happen. <sighs> so the voice was like, come on, just pray. You think too much. And the other voice said, Handel, don't pray. I was like, what? The voice said, you need to know who your God is. You need to search out and find God. Don't pray. Oh. Which voice would you listen to? Anybody? Pray? Yeah, I said, pray. Yeah, just don't think about it, just pray. <laughs> well, you know what? I was a little different at age nine, so I decided you know, I'm gonna try something different. And I took a risk, and I didn't pray. And my family, dear Lord, <laughs> they surrounded me. <laughs> and, you know, I got punished, I went to my room, they said don't come out until you, you know, talk to Jesus. So, it was actually a really good, good advice, you know? I went to my room, and I sat there, and I, I formed a relationship with God that lasted me through my entire life, and 
I made a promise with God that I would follow him as long as he continued to hold on to me, and he's never let me go, praise the Lord. Maybe I'll tell you more about that story sometime. Well, I thank God for the prayers of my family. They prayed a lot over me, <laughs> especially through my teenage years, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and during adolescence, I actually feared life itself. Now, I wanted to go to heaven, and I still do, mind you. Um, so I asked God to take my hand, and I was baptized, praise the Lord. Um, next came a series of prayers that began at age 12. I was praying for a wife at age 12. <laughs> Can anyone relate? Okay. Praise the Lord, I, because I prayed at that age. You know, you guys enjoy the food and the calf, right? <laughs> Amen? Amen? Prayer changes things, huh? Okay, thank you, thank you. All right. <laughs> Well, I, I knew that God needed some time to work on her, so, you know, I prayed early. Uh, so, let that be a lesson. <laughs> so, I also prayed and asked the Lord to help me make it through my teen years without losing my faith, my health, or my chastity. And God answered my prayers. Um, yeah, it was quite a struggle, but God won out in the end, so praise the Lord. Uh, next in my life, came trusting God with my diet. I'm <laughs> still struggling with that a little. <laughs> yeah, don't laugh. I, I know where you live. <laughs> I didn't even know that I needed a change, but God did. And so it was off to Pacific Union College. Actually, before I went to PUC, I had never been to an Adventist school in my life. I went to public schools, right? I graduated a class of 900. 900 people in a public school in California. Yeah, so I went to PUC and uh, Pacific Union College, and that's where I learned media. And I also learned how to become a lacto-ovo vegetarian. Anybody know what a lacto-ovo vegetarian is? <laughs> Anybody in here a lacto-ovo vegetarian? <laughs> anyone here a vegan? <laughs> yeah, that came later in my life. Is anyone here kosher? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I was kosher and I went to Lacta Ovo. Yeah, and then I progressed, but that's another story. So, yeah, Lacto is derived from milk. It's a Latin word for um, milk, okay, and lactose. And um, ovo comes from the word eggs, like ovular or, you know, oval. Yeah, very good. Okay, that's also Latin. And, um, well, being a lacto ovo vegetarian is different from how I grew up when I was a kid. And um, went to the school and I thought, well, you know, I'm going to this Adventist school, one of the Lord's schools. Everybody follows the rules. I love this place. It's like heaven. Right? <laughs> okay, maybe not. Well, <laughs> it's getting there. It's progressing. Now, when I, when I went there, um, a bunch of my peers actually went to pig out at... KFC, and I was very surprised about this. So I, I thought, wow, um, wh what are they doing there? Uh, weren't the laws of health supposed to kind of protect us from, you know, that's uh, it's very strange. And uh, I, did, I couldn't, I didn't know how to, how, to, how to place that, but the Lord brought to my mind this picture. He gave me this picture of uh, Israel. You guys remember Israel? When they, they had all the quail come down in the camp and I was like, oh my, you know, I, I realized at that point that being at the right college doesn't save you. Hmm, yeah, being at the right college does not save you. You have to actually do what is right, which you know to be right every day, okay? That's what will make a difference in your life, and that's what made a difference in my life, and that's what God made real to me. So that was just the first step in the path toward diet change. After graduation, I was free. I could eat whatever I wanted to. I hopped on a plane, went to the mission field in South Korea, and right in front of me was a chicken meal. And I began to eat my chicken meal and thinking, oh, freedom. 
And as I looked up, I saw a screen in front of me and it said, avian flu hits Asia. <laughs> I go, what? Whoa. <laughs> yeah, it was that bad. And I realized that uh, at that point, the news said that millions of chickens and, and fowl were being destroyed to save the industry. I thought, oh man, I don't want an avian flu. So I prayed to the Lord and I said, Lord, please protect me from this, this thing. And, you know, and I'll go totally, you know, vegetarian, not totally, but like lacto over vegetarian again. And I'll, as long as I'm working for you, I thought I'd just be working one year. <laughs> I'll, I'll do that. So I made a vow. I made a vow. And um, that was my burden. So in Psalms chapter 55, verse 22, it says, cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I, 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 I made an agreement with him because I knew that he would hear me. I had had experience with him before and this would change my life. So I knew that God had his hands full because in my body, I carried a secret. Anybody know what that secret was? Maybe I told somebody. I had allergies. I had a lot of allergies to everything vegetarian, basically. So um, anybody like green apples? Okay, how about mangoes? Oh, yeah. Okay, what about tomatoes? Avocados? Bananas? Couldn't eat them. Allergies. Yeah. Yeah, that was messed up. (laughs) I'm sorry. It's pretty bad. Sorry. Um, So it was quite detrimental to my health. Um, I ended up eating a lot of pizza and a lot of other things that I ought not to have been eating just continually. And I gained a lot of weight in Korea. And uh, fast forward three years to uh, a time when I was living in a 22-floor apartment building. I was standing on the roof in the rain because I wanted to have a chat with God privately. There were a lot of people in Korea, so you got to go hide and get private. So I was up there, and I was at my wit's end, and I was praying, Lord, have mercy on me. I was trying to get respectfully bold with God. And I will share with you in a little bit what my prayer was. But moments later, he answered my prayer, my prayer about the healthy food that he wanted me to eat. All of my allergies disappeared permanently. Hebrews chapter four, verse 16 says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God came to my need at that point. Then he assured me that he would later teach me how to be healthy and how to stay healthy. This he did. And um, in time, I went home and I worked in media for one of our flagship uh, churches in Southern California. And uh, I was a post-production manager, which is, basically is a big name for video editor. And (laughs) during one of my edits, um, yeah, it's significant. Um, There's a guy named Dr. Neil Nedley. Anyone heard of him? Yeah, you've heard of him. I was actually editing one of his programs and I was completely oblivious to what he was saying, but it entered a back door in my mind and it stayed there. And I began to understand a little bit more about health. There was also another guy named... Dr. McDougall, I don't know if everyone's, anyone's ever heard of Dr. Yeah, you guys are doctors over there. And uh, I watched one of his videos called Doc, Dr. McDougall's Medicine. I had to edit it and do something else on it. And that one hit me like a ton of bricks because he was talking about milk and ice cream and eggs, all the things that I loved. And I thought, oh no, he called, he called milk, liquid meat. And I thought, oh boy, what am I thinking? What am I doing? I, someone's going to argue with me after, probably. <laughs> but, you know, it, it shocked me enough to make me think twice about my diet. So a few years, a few years later, 
my health began to improve because I started putting some of these um, things into, into practice, but I was still single and I was also getting fluffy. Okay, some of you know what that means. <laughs> yes, I was working two jobs and I was really stressed out and I began learning theology and um, I felt like I was going to the wrong school though, but I was asking myself, oh Lord, is this really what life is about? Sitting in Southern California and living like this and I thought, I need an, another way out. And so I began to pray. I had a prayer session with God about my life. I fasted and prayed on the floor with my Bible open, lit a candle, you know, I don't know, I learned that at my class. <laughs> and God answered me miraculously enough. Um, he actually told me what to do next. Um, he said, twice, mind you, I had to go back the next day because I was like, did I really hear right? He said, go to Wildwood. <laughs> yeah, I, I had been to Wildwood and I knew what that meant, but I was like, okay, maybe, maybe I, it's just my thought. So I, I fasted the next day and prayed again and got the same answer. So I knew that he was serious. Well, I trusted him in Korea and I was gonna trust him now. So 2,400 miles later, I drove my green Kia up Lifestyle Lane and ended up at Wildwood, Georgia. And there I met some of the most amazing people. I don't know if you guys, anybody know the Puffers? Probably not. So, whoa, whoa, got two people, all right, good. Yeah, and uh, they didn't just teach me about Jesus Christ, like really teach me about Christ. They shared him in everything that they did in their whole lives. It transformed my whole understanding of heaven. And also Messiah's Mansion, anybody know anything about Messiah's Mansion? I did that too completely transformed my understanding of the sanctuary and of salvation and everything. Um, amen, praise the Lord for that. So you're like, this is about health, right? <laughs> it's also about trusting God and about prayer. Okay, so through that experience, my faith grew by leaps and bounds. I wholeheartedly accepted the health message that they taught me at Wildwood, a message that I had previously never understood or even read about being Seventh-day Adventist. I know, it's really sad, I'm sorry. I actually never read it before. <laughs> Don't throw stones. <laughs> yeah, you know that book on the shelf, the really nice black ones with the gold lettering that they used to have back in the old days? Maybe the red ones? Oh, the red ones, you guys know the red ones. We had the black ones, testimonies, and we had the red ones. We never read them, <laughs> sorry. My parents read them and they put it into practice, but anyway, it's a whole other story. But I must say that one of the hardest things in my whole life was giving up chocolate. <laughs> That's right, no more caffeine in my diet. <laughs> I guess you can relate. <laughs> God convicted me that caffeine was killing me slowly, so I trusted him and gave that up. I still remember my last bag of M&Ms as I walked home from the gas station. It was a big one. It took me a while, but I finally walked back to Wildwood and I was like, oh, <laughs> grudgingly, oh. And I finished it, crunch, crunch, bag, so trash. Never to cross my palate again. And then I walked into the campus store and the Lord heard the longing of my heart, and a ray of sunshine came out of heaven and landed, I'm being a little dramatic, yes, I'm being dramatic, I know, I'm sorry, on this little product called carob clusters. Anybody know carob clusters? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And hallelujah, praise, tears of joy. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, so, Somewhere in my mind, I imagined it tasted just like chocolate, and I, I never went back. <laughs> so, <laughs> my wife still can't understand that, though. She's like, it does not taste like chocolate. Anyway. <laughs> so, I was really very happy about that. Um, so, God answered my prayer there. 
What I haven't shared with you, well, what I have shared with you are some of my answered prayers, but what I haven't shared with you are some of the prayers that God decided to answer in his own way. And I, I, don't, I don't have time to even go into those. Um, one having to do with my brother, one having to do with my mother. Um, maybe I'll tell you if you ask me personally or at home. But um, this is something that people, other people have experienced also. How many of you guys have prayed for one thing and gotten something else from God? Has that happened? <laughs> yeah, that's happened. And uh, I, I don't want to ignore that that happens. I want to let you know that it happened to me too. But I want to leave you with thoughts from inspiration. Testimonies for the church, chapter 1, verses, uh, verse 120. It says, your faith must not let go of the promises of God. If you do not see or feel the immediate answer to your prayers, be not afraid to trust in God. Rely upon his sure promise. Ask, and ye shall receive. God is too wise to error and too good to withhold any good thing from his saints that walk uprightly. I wasn't afraid to trust in God. Yeah. And he answered. So, what's the take home message tonight? Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You guys, finish the verse. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Okay, trust God genuinely. John chapter 15, verse seven says, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Know God genuinely. 1 John 3, verse 22 says, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Obey God genuinely from the heart. Then act in accordance with his will after praying. So, I prayed 22 floors up. And I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> so I said, Lord, you want me to be a vegetarian because it's healthy. That's why you sent me that video on the airplane. I've got these allergies to all kinds of healthy things. How can I be a vegetarian and be allergic to vegetables? It's like a duck that's allergic to down, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You've given me a burden I can't bear. However, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. If it's a part of your plan that I carry this burden for the rest of my life, I am willing to do it. If this is a path that I must walk, okay, no problem. But if it's just the enemy's taunting or a fluke or the curse of sin and it's not ordered by your throne, if it doesn't need to be there, take it away. Do it now. Do it immediately, Lord. Right now, permanently. Please, I can't bear this anymore. You opened the Red Sea. You turned water into wine. Everything you do is done for a purpose and with a mighty hand. I know because I read and I believe. This is such a small thing for you, such a small thing. Please, Lord, really, it's no problem for you. You're God of the whole universe, and you're merciful. I'm gonna wait right here for your answer.
Well, please answer me now. I know you can take the time. You're not a busy guy. I know you have a lot to do, but I trust and I believe. And I waited. How many of us wait for God? How many of you wait on the Lord? Just, I mean, I know it means like wait on the Lord, but how many of you actually wait after praying to hear what God has to say? Well, I prayed in Jesus' name, and then I waited. You know, when you pray in faith, you have to be ready to act also. Okay, because you pray, if God answers right away, what are you going to do? Like, oh, we were supposed to go already? Oh, so I should start taking a step now? You actually have to be ready to go. If you say, Lord, I will open the way to the mission field, and like you get a flood of money. Whoa, what do I do now? <laughs> I haven't even booked a ticket. <laughs> right? You have to be ready to move. So he heard me. And I'm going to skip that. Um, he actually said, Handel, I've heard you. And I thought, okay, what does that mean? Does that mean the prayer's answered? So what do I do? Okay, I trust you. It's answered. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to eat, unless you have something further to say. I'm going. So I ran downstairs. I don't know, I could have taken the elevator, but I, I just felt like running. I ran downstairs, back down to my like seventh floor or something. <laughs> it's a long way. I got in the door, I sat down at the table, and I took, I still remember, took a banana. Opened it, you know. I looked up at the ceiling, I was like. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And I was like, <laughs> And then I felt the tingle of the allergies going, oh, remember me? I'm like, oh no, it's coming. You know, swollen lips. And I said, no, God healed me. I was serious. And that feeling went, oh, okay, 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 okay. And it went away, it never came back. Amen. Praise the Lord, it never came back. I was like, wow. And you remember, you have to pray doubting nothing. So, then I took an apple. <laughs> oh, and I, I, ate, I finished the whole bowl of fruit. It was great. <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> but I mean, I, I've been waiting for this. So, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, praise the Lord. So, God kept his promise and answered my prayer. Now, I'm allergy free today, not just because I prayed a prayer, but because I knocked at God's door and he opened the door to me. Prayer changes things, amen? Amen. amen. Okay. Are you knocking at God's door today? Anybody here knocking at God's door? How many of you have knocked at that door and felt like giving up? Hmm. Okay. Have you ever tried being respectfully bold with God? And not just knocking persistently, but saying, Lord, I need this within a certain given period of time. I really do. Anybody considered that before? I'd like for you to, we're going to actually have prayer tonight. Yes, it is a prayer meeting. <laughs> but I want to especially ask for you to pray for someone who has that kind of need, who's knocking at God's door, who's been knocking for a while, who has an urgent and important need. Okay, we're gonna pray tonight and pray for, get in a group and pray for one person, just one, okay? But I want you guys to do united, bold, respectfully bold prayer together for that one person. I want to see, <laughs> stop. <laughs> uh, and I want you to see that God is willing to answer your prayer. The prayer, the answer to that prayer might be yes. The answer to that prayer might be no. The answer to that prayer might be wait. Or he might answer it in a way you're not expecting. 
but God answers prayer. Amen? All right. All right, so uh, in just a moment, I'm going to pray. And I'll pray first, and I'm gonna ask that as you pray with that individual, guys with guys, girls with girls, mind you, please, you know, you guys can lay hands on each other if you want, but just guys with guys, girls with girls. Um, I'd like for you to remember those verses that you've been singing about. Let them play back in your mind, okay? And ask God for that verse, claim that verse and say, Lord, I believe this with all my heart and let it be real for you, okay? Now I know you guys have to go study, so we're gonna go ahead and pray. I'm gonna pray real quick and then I want you to get in groups. You can get in groups of two, three, five, six. Okay, don't go any more than eight people. All right, let's pray. Please uh, kneel down, let's start. Our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, um, tonight I'm gonna expand my circle of people that I pray for. Um, Lord, I wanna pray for each and every person in this room. Pray that you send your Holy Spirit to be on them. Rest on them tonight and influence their hearts and minds. Give them what to pray, Lord. Give them, uh, bring back the things to their mind that they've known from your word and help them to incorporate those in their prayers tonight. And Lord, as they pray for that one special person that has a very deep need of their heart and their mind, uh, maybe it's an intercessory prayer for someone in their family, it could have been an accident or a death or a, um, even homework. Um, or a test or something. Uh, Lord, I ask that whatever that burden is in that person's heart, that you hear the prayers of your saints and that you answer, Lord. Um, and then, as they go from this place, uh, I ask that you help them to act in faith according to the prayer. Lord, be here in this place. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, and now I ask that you find group of people that you can pray with. Um, could be next to you or across the room, doesn't matter. Please pray for one person. You may rest your hand on their shoulder or their head or hand or something. Let them know you're there. Okay, and after you're done, you can exit quietly and sing hymns in the, as you leave the, the room in the building. Thank you. <laughs> 